truth in life urban ministry where faith and activism meet here's your host brother leon prophet to the streets and pastor to the people What's going on, Facebook Live family? What's going on, Truth and Life Urban Ministry family? I am your pastor, Pastor Leon, prophet to the streets and pastor to you good people. So today, we're starting something new. So let me go ahead and turn this off. But I want you guys, man, to just... I think the one thing that I love about the fact that God gives us something new, we are... Let me turn this on. We're starting a new series this morning called Let No Man Put Asunder, Keep the Clergy Out of Your Bedroom. So you can see my background behind me. And so the one thing about it is that the background behind me is a cover of a book that I wrote. And it came out back in 2018. And um, I'm actually going to be teaching out of this book this morning. So guys, what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to offer this book for $10. $10 this morning. Up on social media, hit me up on Messenger, hit me up on Instagram, hit me up, just hit me up, and you know, cash at me twelve dollars. I could put this bad boy in the mail and send it off to you because one of the reasons why I actually started the podcast was to uh, get the teaching of this book out. But you know, life happens, man, and, and, and now I'm like, okay, Lord, now it's time. And so the Lord was like, hey, it's time. So. I was like, all right, because God gave us a message. I think the thing that I'm going to be doing this morning is that I wish I would have included a lot of things that I'm saying this morning. I wish I would have included it in the book. But the one thing I want you guys to understand, the book is good. We are definitely going to go back and and do some rewrites and actually bring it out again. Still going to keep the same cover, but it's going to be some new information. So the one thing that I want you guys to understand about life like we talked about even when we were doing changing the narratives of our lives is that you have to begin to look at the fact that as a man you are called to be a prophet you are a prophet when you are a father and when you are a father when you are a husband those two offices they they take and they merge because when you are a husband you are a prophet because the bible says that the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy. prophecy. Prophecy is forward speaking. Prophecy is basically, okay, here's the word of the Lord. Here's how this life is going to go. And as a father, you pretty much can, can do that and set that thing in motion by your actions and your words. Because the one thing that I told you guys is that children, they learn. And children see. They see And they learn from their fathers. Fathers are the people that give life lessons. Mothers are the ones who give us influence. And so as a mother, as a wife, you got to realize that your power of influence over the home, over the kids, over the husband is very powerful. And that's why you can't allow influence to turn into manipulation. And so you got to understand what the man represents in the home. And so today we are going to talk about let no man put asunder, but we're going to talk about the office. And what I mean by office, you have to look at the fact that the, 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 the title of spouse is more like an office. When you begin to look at, look at it as an office that is just important as the presidency, an office that is just important as a pastor, the office that is just important as a prophet, then you can understand like, hey, I just can't treat being a husband any old kind of way. I just can't treat being a wife any old kind of way because the thing is is that when you have offices people are dependent upon that office because there is a power in that office and the one thing that I love about offices offices are like money money only magnifies what you are because money is a tool money is a tool of access when you enter into husband when you enter into wife it is access it is power and it makes you more of what you are Because a lot of people, man, they focus on the wedding day, but they don't focus on the marriage. And a lot of people get caught up in the dating phase. They they love love. But do you love love enough to learn? Do you love love enough to, to really look at it as an investment? Seriously, because 
I ain't gonna lie, and I'm gonna do a, a podcast on it in the near future. When we are in love, we we have the whole show. We have we have songs that minister to us when we are in love. Songs that we play, songs that we sing, and then we break up. We like I don't even want to hear that no more. Shut up. Like I know with me, man, when I was in love. Man, Brian McKnight and Babyface was playing all throughout my car, all throughout my day. Because I was dedicating songs. Eric Benet, I learned how to sing Eric Benet. Seriously. But then, you know, when, when life started getting hard and, and breakups came, I was up here playing Carl Thomas and, 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 and John Legend, ordinary people. You know, go back to hell again. <laughs> Kid said we make up on the way ordinary people. Seriously. And I mean, it's just crazy because the one thing I want you guys to understand is this. Is that you can make it. And I understand why a lot of people, in even this generation, I understand why they don't have faith in marriage. And the reason why people don't have faith in marriage is because we don't take the office serious enough. We don't take being, being, being a, 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 a husband serious enough. And it's more than just being a provider. It's more because anybody can bring money on a situation. But the thing is, is that can you add life to it? Can you add life to the home? Can you add life to your wife? Can you add life to your children? Because these are the things that are important. Because I'm going to tell you, man, yes, we need money. We need sex. We need all of that. And all of that is good. But, the, but I'm going to tell you this, marriage is the closest thing that you're going to get to heaven or hell on the earth. You can have a marriage that is made in heaven, or you can have a, a marriage that is going to hell. Going through hell and going to hell. Yes, I said it. Because at the end of the day, man, it's about success. And some of us, man, we haven't gained the knowledge on how to have successful marriages. It's a whole lot of things that they don't tell you, uh, you know, in marriage, about marriage and how to have a successful one. Because here's the one thing I want you to, to realize this, and this is one of the myths. Everybody comes with baggage. That's one myth. Everybody, none. It's the truth. And the myth is, they don't tell you that. <laughs> they tell you that everybody's supposed to be perfect. Everybody needs, oh, no. People come into marriage with baggage. I don't care if they save, I don't care if they administer, I don't care if they're a bishop, apostle, prophet, I don't care who they are. People come with baggage because people have life history on the inside of them. And so the one thing you have to ask yourself, okay, am I going to get to the place where, okay, are we going to unpack this together? Because there's some unpacking that you do together and there's some unpacking that you do separately. Some of that unpacking you have to do before you enter into marriage. Because you can't look as look to your spouse as being, you know, the healer of the total sum of all the emotional trauma that you've ever experienced. Because you're doing yourself a disservice when you take and put all of that into them. Because you have to ask yourself, what accountability and what responsibility will I play in the healing of my soul? Seriously. I ain't gonna lie. God can use us as a conduit. God can use every man, every woman as a tool. But God is the healer. Your husband is not a healer. Yes, I said it. Your husband is not a healer. Your wife is not a healer. God is the healer. And one thing that you got to begin to do is to get to the place where you want to be whole more than anything. Because when you take responsibility, when you take accountability for your healing prior to the marriage... Then I'm going to tell you, you're going to have a good marriage. And when issues do come up, the one thing that a person knows is that, hey, I, my wife is a fighter. My husband is a fighter because I saw them in the dating phase get healed of stuff, get delivered from stuff. And that's the thing that we have to do. Seriously, because a lot of people enter into marriage putting trust in it. But you put trust in the dating phase. Trust has to be earned in the dating phase because I'm going to tell you this right now. If you can't trust them when you're dating, if they cheating on you when you, when they dating, trust, it's going to happen when you marry. Because I'm going to tell you this, man. Marriage, I'm sorry to tell you this. Marriage don't hardly change nobody. It only, it only reveals what people already are. 
And a lot of people feel as though that, oh yeah, man, marriage, marriage is going to change me. I ain't going to be like that. No, you are going to be like that. So you need to get those issues resolved now. Because if you don't get those issues resolved before you say I do, you are setting yourself up and the other person up for a train wreck. Yes, I said it. Because it's not fair. It's not fair when, when, when people have expectations, been faithful, been this, been that, and you coming with bull. Some of y'all coming with bull. Some of y'all coming with game. Some of you don't even have no intentions of being faithful. But the one thing I, I want you to realize is that this is the reason why our kids do not have faith in the in the covenant of marriage. They don't have faith in the system of marriage. Because the one thing, man, we come with bull, we come with game. But the one thing I love about God is that when you get married, when you stand before that altar, God burns off all that mess. He burns up all the game. Because after a while, when you sleep with a person long enough, you're going to see their habits. You're going to see their words. You're going to see the fact that they manifested. Seriously. And a lot of us, man, you know, the Bible says in, in, in Genesis that Adam and his wife, they were naked and not ashamed. Some of us right now, man, because the game has been burned off, the mask has been burned off. We don't like what we see. We don't like the nakedness that we feel. And we definitely don't like the nakedness that we see with our spouse because we asking ourselves, oh, my God, is this what I got? Is, 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 is this who he really is? Is this who she really is? And yes. But the one thing I'm going to tell you is this. Is that when you see the raw nakedness of a person, you have the potential right there to turn that marriage around. You have the potential to work together because the Bible says, can two walk together except they agree? And so you have to begin to agree to allow God to be the focal point of your marriage. Because here's the priority. Here's the order. God, then you, then your spouse, then your kids. So I'm going to say it again. God, you, your spouse, then your children. Your children should not take God's place. Your spouse should not take God's place. Matter of fact, your children should not even take your spouse's place. Yes, I said it. Even in a blended home. Because the crazy thing about it is that we set our, our, our families up to replicate what, what, what we have so that our kids can have the same thing. We want our kids to have a better marriage than us. We want our children to have better relationships than us. So it's time for us to get healed from the trauma. It's time for us to get, to, to get the ghost out of our heads and out of our hearts so that our kids, especially our daughters, especially our sons, can know that marriage works. Because I'm going to tell you this, if you go into marriage as an angry woman, then you're going to produce an angry woman. If you go into marriage emasculating men, women, your son is going, is going to end up growing up resenting women. And so that is the reason why you got to understand that, that the glory is in the home. The glory is on the son. The glory is on the, on, on the husband. And you got to look at the fact that, that husbands, that you play an important role in the house. I'm going to tell you right now, both of you are prophetic in the home because when you begin to look at, at, at life and look at marriage as being prophetic as well as seasonal, you have to understand that God gives you a word for every season so that you can conduct your home, so that you can maneuver in the home and maneuver in the marriage. Because trust and believe, the same man that you met and that you married is not going to be the same man 10 years from now. Same thing with women. And so we got to begin to respect the fact that, that we change over the course of time. We change our looks. We change our beliefs because life happens. Seriously. So I'm going to tell you, this series is definitely going to be important. We are going to exhaust everything on this. Because the one thing that I want, I want you guys to be successful. And the reason why I call this Let No Man Put Us Under Kick the Clergy Out Your Bedroom is because the one thing that, that we don't have is we don't have respect for the title of husband and the title of wife. And they not only are they titles, but they're offices. And we put more emphasis on the pastor than we do our husband sometimes. We up here, we will take what the, what the, what the pastor says into our homes and then allow that to pretty much structure the way it's ran. 
So if the pastor is saying, hey, I need you to do da 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 da, but your husband is saying contrary wise, then you have to ask yourself, okay, am I going to listen to my pastor or am I going to listen to my husband? You listen to your husband because your pastor don't live with you. So even though I'm your pastor, I'm going to tell you this. You honor your husband. You honor your wives. Because I'm going to tell you this. You guys are going to make decisions that you have to live with. I can give you knowledge. I can even give you revelation. But at the end of the day, I want to teach you guys how to make it work. How to make it work with the knowledge that you get, but also how to decide. And to keep people out your business. To keep people out your bedroom. Because it's a whole lot of convictions out here. It's a whole lot of beliefs out here. Because this pastor said it. That pastor said it. This prophet said it. That apostle said it. Man, we take it like gospel and then we put it into our homes. And then we wonder why it don't work. And then it ends up blowing our stuff up. Because what may work for one pastor, what may work for me and my wife may not work for you. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because the one thing that I want you guys to understand and know is that when you begin to get into a place of agreement, get into a place of power, power of agreement, power to decide, and then we have faith in what God has given us, you can make it work. You just got to put the work in. And I'm going to tell you this, do not fall for the myth just because both of us are saying we're going to have a good marriage. No, nah, you got to work it. That's what I fell for. I, man, please. I'm going to tell you this. I fell for that. Me and the wife got disappointed greatly because we felt as though, man, we're not unequally yoked. You can be unequally yoked in other ways. You can be unequally yoked when when it comes to unbeliefs and beliefs. You can be unequally yoked when it comes to issues of finance because you might have one person that's a spender and another person, they're trying to save everything. So, you know, that's, that's where we have to have grace. That's where we have to have balance. Because people break up over money. People break up over sex. Because here's the, here's, the, here's the little fox that destroys the vine. If you do not talk about the issues of sex before you get married, those are going to be the same issues that are putting a wedge in your bed right now. So if you know you like stuff a certain way, if you know you like to have sex three times a week, then you need to say it. If you're the type of person that want to have sex every day, twice a day, then you need to say that. If there's certain times of sex that you want, then you need to say that. Because at the end of the day, man, people, they fall in love with imagination. Fall in love with the imagination. Yo, how this person going to be sexually? Fall in love with the imagination of, hey, she going to be doing this. He's going to be doing that. And and, and the crazy thing is, it's just imagination. And a lot of us, man, we, we try to build relationships and think that, you know, here's the cake. I'm going to just make it with just icing. It's going to be sweet. But then we wonder why it doesn't rise. It has to have ingredients to rise. And then you put the icing on last after it cools off. Seriously. In order to have a successful marriage, there has to be ingredients. It just can't be one thing. It just can't be sex. It just can't be finance. And even though the Bible does say that money answers all things, it doesn't answer issues of integrity. It doesn't answer issues of trust. I can have all the money in the world, but if my wife don't trust me, what what good is it? Seriously. So you have to begin to look at the fact of where we are. So I'm glad that we're starting this series, Let No Man Put Asunder. I know I didn't said a lot. So let me go into the book. Let no man put asunder. Hey, the the the, the cover is crazy. I got I got it in the background, and it's definitely gonna be on the podcast today. But let me tell you why I wrote this book, and then I'm going to end up giving you, end up giving you the story probably later on. It won't be today. But um, I want to start in the introduction. What this book is about, I wrote this book in the defense of marriage and a couple's rights not to be bound by religious convictions and legalism not based on scripture or founded upon the word of God. The word conviction has many definitions, and here's the one I intend conviction a firmly held belief or opinion so let me go here families come to the house of god to get direction on how to successfully do what god has purposed the family to do which is create god fearing spouse loving and child rearing males and females who will usher in the coming of christ the mindset of this generation has integrated into the church system in the form of a new legalism that is empowered 
by titles alone and not by scriptures. The tragedy is that there is no accountability and responsibility when it comes to a person's personal convictions coming from the mouths of some clergy on certain issues. This generation of clergy needs to know how to be responsible and accountable to each other in the families and the communities in which they live, work, and serve. Every generation is taught by the previous one. What we are seeing is the current generation is what is spoken of in the book of Proverbs. And so coming out of Proverbs chapter 30, verse 14, there is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The rise of divorce is rampant in the church and society due to a lack of teaching on relationship skills and life skills in light of the scriptures that we hold dear. The marriage bed is also under attack due to this lack of sound teaching. The marriage bed is where couples interact, give, and exchange love. When that is under attack by the devil, false teaching, and convictions, the devil has already won by dealing marriage a slow death by diminishing the commitment of the marriage. When I say marriage bed, I am not talking sex alone, but about everything else that comes from the marriage bed and works its way out into the other areas of people's lives and home. The average churchgoer may may see their clergy in an average of eight hours a month, but the clergymen can speak into a, uh, the lives and have a lasting impact, whether positive or negative, for better or worse, for a lifetime due to the trust people place in the office of clergy. And that's what I said right there, the office. Because when you have the office, the office allows you influence. The office allows you access. And so when you begin to enter into marriage, you have to begin to look at marriage as an office. The husband is an office. The wife is an office. You hold an office in your home. Because here's the one thing that I want you guys to understand is that the church is a conduit in the earth. And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand is that marriage is 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 a covenant from God, but also marriage is a conduit as well. It is a conduit to the church, is a conduit to the community. And so however our community goes or however our marriages goes, that's how the community is. If our community is broken up, our marriages are broken up. If our community needs economic help, our marriages need economic help. And so it starts with us. It starts with us because if you want our communities to be built up, then we build up the family. If you want economic power in the community, then it starts with the family because the family is the one that's going to be doing the buying and the spending. Seriously. And this is the reason why we have to have these conversations and have these teachings on family, on faith, on marriage, even on divorce, even on infidelity, because at the end of the day, these are the things that are going to be in our community. These are the things that are going to be in our churches. And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand and know is this, is that you can have success. But the one thing about success, if you want it, you're going to have to work it. You're going to have to be real with it. And that's the God knows truth, because a lot of us, man, we approach our marriages. We ain't real. We ain't real with our spouse. We ain't real during the dating phase. We putting up a game. And then the crazy thing about it is that we get counsel from people, man, who who have no who lack no integrity. I'm going to tell you this. Look, don't be getting counsel from a person that they cheating on their spouse. Seriously, you don't, you don't need to be getting counsel from about, about your marriage from a person that, that don't even respect their vows. And that's just being real honest because, number one, they ain't on your level. Number two, they out there. I think the one thing that you can only get from that is say, hey, I'm not going to do that. Mm, seriously, I, I'm not getting nothing from that person because at the end of the day, don't, they don't even honor themselves. Because here's the thing about infidelity. Infidelity is you ripping off the covering of, of your marriage and, 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 and off that spouse because marriage covers you. And when you have infidelity, when you cheat on your spouse, you are tearing up, you're attacking the covenant, and you're ripping up the covering. Yes, you are ripping up the covering. And so that's how, you know, how that's how it works. It all starts with a conversation. An enemy, he comes to attack marriage because that was the first thing initiated. Marriage came before ministry. 
That's the God knows truth. Marriage came before ministry, but yet we take and honor the minister more than we honor our spouse. And that, and that should not be. We should put more emphasis on our spouses than we do the minister that we may listen to weekly. So that's the one thing that I want you to do in this house. You honor your spouse. You honor your wife. You love your wife, men. You love your wife. You do the little things, man. Seriously, learn, listen. So many relationships suffer because people don't pay attention. People don't listen. It's almost like your husband is asking you, hey, baby, can you can you get me steak and potatoes and, 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 and some broccoli? And you bring him back hot dogs and french fries. And I'm like, and then, and then the crazy part is like, uh, Hey, this is good and all, but 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 can I get what I asked for? And then you up here and say, well, you need to be happy I gave you something anyway. See, that's the reason why we got to change. Because we need to begin to start listening. Because people say what they want. If your spouse is saying, hey, I need this. Can you give me this? Then, hey, it should be in your best interest to give that person what they need because grace goes both ways. If you want a man to honor you, to love you, to cherish you, then you listen to that man. Vice versa. Seriously. Women, you got to start listening. Trust. Men do not communicate on y'all's level sometimes. And I'm going to say this. Men may be filled with the Holy Ghost. There are some men that are prophets. But trust and believe, a man cannot un- know what's on your mind all the time. And that's the God knows truth. So don't expect him to be like, oh, he should just know. Seriously. No, nah, he might be filled with the Holy Ghost, but he don't know what's going on in your heart and in your mind. Sometimes you got to communicate that. And that's the God knows truth. So let's go into the teaching. Marriage is a covenant of God in the earth. That is the closest thing to heaven and hell upon the earth. And so the one thing that I want you guys to understand is that the attacks in your marriage, they come because the enemy has always wanted to make a mockery of God, make a mockery out of God and his creation. And that's the God knows truth. So when, 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 when the devil came to Eve in the garden, it was an attack not only against them, against humanity, but it was also an attack against God. And this is the reason why I say that when the enemy comes against your marriage, against your spouse, it is an attack not only against the family of man, but also against God. Because God, that was the first thing that he blessed. He blessed and said, be fruitful and multiply. Bless them. And that is the blessing of God, to be fruitful and to multiply, to add, to multiply. Two, four, six, eight, ten, multiply, add, multiply, don't subtract, seriously. Next point, marriage is like parenthood. Marriage, just like parenthood, are prophetic offices that can determine the life of the family that comes via the marriage. And so the one thing that you got to understand is that when you are a husband, you are called to be the prophet. You are called to be the prophet. You are called to be the priest of the home. Every prophet can act as a priest, a priest that covers, because you need to, to know men how to navigate your family through seasons of life. So this is the reason why that every man needs to pray. This is the reason why you have those scriptures. I wish that men would pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath, without doubting. Doubting who you are as a man, without wrath. Constantly being angry, constantly having issues of rage in your heart that you haven't dealt with. But when we begin to lift up our hands, when we begin to see that God has called us to be sons, Because you start off being a son, then you go into the next phase of being a father, and then you go into the next phase of being of being a husband. Seriously, or you can go son, husband, father. We can go that way. Matter of fact, that's that's the best order. Son, husband, father. But I know a lot of times, man, we have kids before we get married now, and I get that. But at the end of the day, you have to begin to understand and know that these offices as as men. 
the office of the father, the office of the husband are prophetic offices. They're also seasonal offices. And the one thing that I want you to know is, is this, is that life is seasonal and there's going to be seasonal times that you have as, as a husband. There's going to be seasonal times that you have as a wife. Because I'm going to tell you, no season lasts forever. There's going to be season where it's just going to be hard. It's going to be, you know, ground that you're going to have to work, ground that you're just going to have to plow. But here's the one thing I want you to know. The Bible says, as long as seed time and harvest, as long as there's seed time and harvest, the earth will remain. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time. There will be harvest. And so the one thing I want you to know is that there are seasons. There's spiritual seasons in life, physical seasons in life. There may be seasons in life right now where it just seems like, man, I'm just going through financially. But that season will not last forever. There may be seasons in life where you may be challenged in your body, but I am here to tell you that that season will not last forever and that God is going to give you wisdom and guidance to navigate through it all. And that's the one thing that I love about God is that he gives us the ability to act as a prophet in the office. And so when you begin to speak it, that thing can begin to manifest. Seriously, because it says in the book of Job that thou shalt decree a thing, and it will be established unto thee, then the light shall shine upon thy way. Seriously, thou shalt decree a thing. And so as prophets, men, as husbands and wives, we begin to set the tone of the family because when you look at family you got to understand that that man carries around generational trees and seed on the inside of him and the woman is the one that births the generation the woman is the one that takes the seed and births it and so here's the reason why man that we have to have successful marriages and this is the reason why we keep people out of our business is that number one you don't need no outside influence messing up the, the structure of your home. That's the God knows truth. You don't need it. But the one thing that we have to begin to do is that we have to begin to have the hard conversations when we date. Because a lot of people have expectations, unrealistic expectations. A lot of people come with baggage. And baggage is something that you're going to have to unpack and deal with. And a lot of people... Women fall in love with potential, and we all fall in love with imagination, women and men. And so you got to begin to look at it. Hey, what's the reality of this person? Because marriage is the realest thing, the closest thing that you're going to have to heaven or hell upon the earth, and it can't be one-sided. I can't tell you that enough. Marriage cannot be one-sided. And if you guys are married to, to people with narcissistic tendencies, whether they male or female, I'm going to tell you this. You are in for a ride. And that's the God knows truth. Unless that person is willing to change, it's going to be hard. I'm telling you that right now. So, next point. Marriage is a joining of blood, souls, families, assets, and beliefs. So that's the one thing about marriage is that when you come into it, you are actually joining yourself. One thing about marriage is that we talk about the, the, the symbolism of soul ties. And, and one thing is that when you say I do, then you consummate the marriage, man, you're joining. Your soul is tied to that person emotionally, blood, families, assets, beliefs. Because when you come together, man, you are saying, hey, you know, I agree with with you. I agree that I'm going to be part of your family and your family is going to be a part of me. And this is the reason why we have to have those conversations. Because there's a lot of people, I may, I may have married him, but I ain't married his family. You married his family. You knew how crazy they was. You knew how crazy they was. And the crazy part about it, I'm like, man, please. You could try to say, hey, you know, um, I'm not like, man, yes, you are like them. You are like them. You come from them. You know, those family members that you get embarrassed of, you'd be like, oh my God, I don't even want to look at social media. Look what so-and-so doing today. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't believe she's showing all that on, 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 on Instagram. Yes, that's your family. The same family that, 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 that you don't hardly want to talk to at the family reunion, the same family that you got cousins. You be like, mm -mm, I'm not leaving my man around. No. Yes, that family. Because at the end of the day, man, God put you there for a reason. 
Seriously, I'm serious. God put you in certain families for a reason. And some of that reason may be so that he can uh, put that family on a new trajectory so that something new can come out of it. Because, hey, you know, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of that home? Because I ain't going to lie. Some of y'all, man, you know your names. You know the reputation around your name. Oh, trust. I knew what Temple was. I knew what Brown was. And I'm like, yo, it might be a lot of flair. It might be some... Some, some this and that, but I, but I knew the dark side too. <laughs> but, the, but the one thing that I can say is that God puts us here for a reason. And a lot of us, man, I had to deal with it. I dealt with the family ghosts. And I dealt with the family ghosts and dealt with the, you know, the scandal and the conspiracies and all that type of stuff. I dealt with it so my son wouldn't have to deal with it. So now there's a new day for him. But I dealt with the old stuff. But the one thing that I, that I realize is that they can't disown me and I can't disown them. We are part of each other. And that's the God knows truth. I'll never be embarrassed. I'll never be shamed. Uh-uh. Because I look at it like this. Not, not, not only do I have a name, but God has given me a name as well. A new name. And I walk in the newness of that name. I walk in the newness that I'm a son of God in the earth. And I'm married to a daughter of God in the earth. And I look at that and I see that and I know that, you know, there's hope. There's hope that that my kids don't have to go through what I went through, broken relationships, broken marriages. I'm serious. And there's a reason behind all of that. But I'm here to tell you today that no matter what, that you can succeed. And and, and even those who, who may be going through divorce, I'm here to tell you that you can be healed and still have success and move on. Because I'm going to tell you, I can't sit up here and teach about marriage and not say nothing about divorce. That's the God knows truth, because divorce is a reality. It's a reality that we have to deal with. It's a a reality that that can happen. And I don't care how much Jesus you got. Seriously. You can shout around the house, shout all over church, run laps. But there is a reality of divorce and some people can't take the fact and wonder why. How is it that Christian people get divorced? Christian people get divorced a lot of times because they haven't dealt with the little issues. And a lot of times there's there's disappointments that haven't been healed from. They haven't been healed from. Seriously. And this is why I tell you, don't fall in love with imagination and don't fall in love with potential. You got to begin to manifest and see some concrete stuff and see some consistent stuff over the course of time. Because if not, as good as you are, as loving as you are, you still might get them papers in the mail. And that's the God knows truth. So marriage is the joining of blood, souls, families, assets, and beliefs. So here's my first scripture and the one scripture that I'm going to be giving you guys every week. Mark chapter 10. Verse 9, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder, let not man break. And so a lot of times, man, God puts us together, but then we end up breaking. We end up breaking because we haven't allowed ourselves to, to take the fact that God has joined us and we haven't added to it. We have to begin to maintain and build up what God has brought together. And we keep him as the center. We always keep his word first place in our lives. We got to begin to pray for one another. And that's the God knows truth. Marriages are actually the offices of ministry in the home and unto the family. That is my first point. And the one thing about the office, the office makes you more of who you are. And so the term office means a position of authority or service, typically one of a public Nature And so the one thing that you have to understand is and know is that when you are out here in the earth, you represent your family, you represent your spouse, you represent your children, if you have any. And so the one thing that I want you to understand is that people see, you know, they respect that office in the earth. It's, you know, you just, okay, okay, here, here's my husband, here's my wife. And people respect it where they respect marriage. So your family is displayed to the community that you hold a position in the earth that grants authority and rights in communities that recognize the position of the office called spouse. So spouse is an office. 
And there's two distinctions, husband and wife. But you call each other spouses. So, you know, when you look at certain insurance policies, who's the next of kin? The spouse. Seriously, the spouse. The office terms are called husband, male, wife, female, and these offices carry weight in the earth. And so the Bible says, husbands dwell with your wives according to knowledge. The Bible also says, husbands love your wives and be not bitter against them. Husbands love your wives as Christ so loved the church and gave. These are the instructions given to men in the office. But it also says, you know, women respect your husbands in not so many terms. Women reverence your husband. You know, Wives, submit therefore unto your own husbands. And I know a lot of women don't like that. But we are called to submit one to another. You submit to the strength in that person. Never the weakness. Never the negativity. Submit to the strength. And we do it in love. But a lot of times, man, we 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 we, we want to have absolute on, cert, on on husbands and wives when it comes to the scriptures. And then sometimes, you know, when it when it goes the other way, it's like, okay, I submit under these conditions. But the Bible is calling you to do certain things. You know, when the Bible says it, yo, you know, do it. But I know, you know, things are conditional. I get that. But you have to ask yourself, hey, if he's doing what he's supposed to do, then why is it that I have to make it conditional? Why do I have to obey under these conditions? Why is it that I have to submit under these conditions when I'm asking him to be, you know, literal when it comes to, to his obedience, but I'm conditional when it comes to mine? Seriously. So I'm saying, you need to be loving me like Christ so loved the church. And he says, well, woman, I need you to respect me. Well, I give you something to respect. I need something to respect. Really? <laughs> and I've heard that argument. Seriously, I've heard that argument, but I totally get it. So this is the reason why we are having this series, Let No Man Put Asunder, because we're going to delve into why obedience is conditional. Because the Bible says, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Seriously. But a lot of us, you know, we, we, we make it so, and we make excuses on why we don't want to follow through. On why we don't want to follow through with our vows. Why we don't want to follow through in, in loving our spouses. Why we don't want to follow through on, on hearing the voice of the Lord for the season for our families. We don't want to hear it. We make excuses. But I'm going to tell you, man, yo, we are going to get rid of all of the excuses. Because here's the thing I want you to know. Is that there is an enemy out here called legalism that wants to take and put a wedge in your house, in your marriage bed. But here's the one thing that I want you guys to understand and know is that you have to have power, agreement, and authority when you walk in the office of husband and wife married to one another. Because when you don't understand, the enemy can take advantage of your weakness. And that's the one thing. We are being destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. We're being destroyed because we don't understand each other. We are being destroyed because I don't listen. You know, we are being destroyed because you ain't paying attention to your spouse. You're being destroyed because, you know, your husband is, is trying his best to communicate and you still ain't hearing him. Your wife is trying to tell you, hey, this is what I need. And, and, and man, you're just being stubborn and don't want to hear it. And this is the reason why we're being destroyed. Lack of knowledge. And I'm going to tell you, man, the one thing that you definitely got to do is you have to pay attention. I'm serious. You listen. You learn how to be present in conversation. You learn how to be aware because there is awareness. When you have awareness, when you know how to listen, you can have success. And I'm going to tell you this, and this is what I told my kids. It don't cost you nothing to listen. But when you don't listen, it will cost you. And a lot of us, we have not listened to the hearts of our spouses, and it's costing us. A lot of us have not listened to the words of our, of our husbands, and it's costing wives. It's costing you. A lot of you haven't listened to the words of your spouse, and it is costing you. And the crazy thing about it is that you listen to the words of the pastor more than you listen to the heart of your spouse. And that shouldn't be. 
Your pastor is not in your home. I'm serious. Your pastor is not in your home. He ain't the one that you lay down with every night. Your spouse is. Your spouse's word should be greater than the, than the words of your pastor. I'm going to tell you that. Yes, the pastors are supposed to watch for your soul. But when it comes to that house and when it comes to that family name, that husband comes before that pastor. And that's the God knows truth. And you do your husband a disservice when you take and respect the pastor more than you respect him. Vice versa. I know, you know, this is hard, but I'm I'm gonna be real with you. I'm serious. I'm gonna be the realest pastor with you. I'm gonna be the realest brother with you. Because a lot of men, I'm telling you, the reason why men don't want to come to church and the reason why some some men stay home on Sundays is because number one, yo, the pastor's putting a wedge in their house. I'm serious. You you keeping my wife out till 10 30 at night. And here it is. I'm like, yo, I need her to be home with me, loving on me. And you got her out here till 1030 at night, three days a week. Got her out here six hours on Sunday. And then you wonder why I'm mad. I'm like, man, please, there's some dudes out here. They like, they ready to go to church and beat the pastor with his own Bible. And the crazy thing about it is that, you know, the, the pastor's first lady is looking all side eye like, yo, when is it going to be us? Because I'm telling you, yo, they married. Seriously, they married, got the same problems as some of y'all, but they mask it by, by, by keeping you out. So they don't have to deal with stuff. Yes, I said it. And some of you just need to be aware. And some of you need to listen. And that's the God knows truth. Listen to what is happening. Listen and be aware to the atmosphere around you in your home. Because trust and believe you know stuff is changing when you see the patterns change. And that's the God knows truth. So never ignore the patterns. When we begin to approach from the aspect that husband is in office, that wife is in office that carries as much weight as a president, pastor, and police officer, we have to begin to see that. Because when you look at those offices, they have power, they have authority. And you as a wife, you as a husband, you both have authority in the home. You have authority in the earth that you can begin to set things in motion. This is the reason why you have to take these roles so seriously. Because, man, you, you set things in motion. I'm telling you, yo, if you act faithful as a husband and as a father and you are committed to the success of your children you have blessed a generation but when you take and damn and when you take and just don't honor your vows you have set that generation on a course of hell because now somebody's going to have to have awareness they're going to have to perceive yo i need to turn this around in order to have success and it's not fair i'm serious it's not fair to the next generation that the previous generation has to deal with this, has to deal with the bull, has to cut through all the red tape. Seriously, it's not fair when 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 you had wealth at your disposal, but then you wasted it all, and now the next generation comes and they ain't got jack. So this is the reason why we need to put stuff in place because the Bible says that a man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, a faithful man, a good man. I'm paraphrasing scriptures. It's a shame, man, when when when. When your kids have to bury you and they ain't got no money to do it with. And they got to have a GoFundMe. Seriously, it's a shame. And I totally get it. But 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 at the end of the day, we need to get to the place where we say, hey, I, I need to do this just in case. And I ain't talking you leave your, your kids millions of dollars, but at least make it so. Whereas, you know, you can at least bury yourself. And, if, and even if you left left them, you know, $500 a piece, that's something. But a lot of us, man, when it comes to our community, man, we, we can't even bury ourselves. I'm serious. We can't even bury ourselves. And, and one thing I want you guys to understand is this, is that it starts with us. In order for our families to be right, we have to be right. And that's the God knows truth. The office of husband and wife is only going to magnify what you really are. And this is the reason why we have to have those conversations in, in, our, in our single and dating phase, in our engagement phase. 
You need to get some counseling. Because some of you, man, yo, you you know you dealt with trauma. Some of you, all you know is survival mode. Survival mode has become a way of life. And life should not be about jungle living. Surviving. And that's the God knows truth. Because God, he wants you to have a good life. Not a survival life. Seriously. Now, survival is for seasons. But it's not for living. And if we think that that survival mode is the way that we ought, ought to live, that, that means you have, have, have taken anxiety and stress and you learn how to be comfortable with it. Because that's what survival mode is. Survival mode is stress. Survival mode is anxiety. But that's not God's best. God's best is that you live in rest, that you live in peace, that you live in joy. That these are the things that that be in your house. That these are the things that be in your marriage. Because when you can give your kids stability, when they know that they have a house and a home that, that has love, that has peace, that has joy, that has laughter. When they see, you know, you know, public displays of affection with their mother and father, even though they may be like, ill, but man, they need that. They love that. A husband loving on his wife. A daughter seeing that her father loves her, his mother, her mother. Seriously, kids need to see that. I'm serious. I'm like, I look at it like this. Your kids may walk in on you, but I look at it like this. At least it ain't another person. It'd be, ooh, ill, daddy, ill, mom. Uh, you know, or young kids. Get off, mom, mom. <laughs> But at the end of the day, I look at it like this. At least they are seeing us together. Now, granted, <laughs> they might have to get some counseling. Oh, I saw my parents having sex. I need some counseling. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of kids can't take their parents having sex. But the one thing that they have to realize is that that's how they got here. Seriously. So, you know, what I want you guys to understand and know is that God has called us for such a time as this. And for us to look at our roles as being prophetic, but also looking at life as being seasonal. And God has given us the prophetic word and given us testimony through Jesus. And Jesus said, wherefore, what God have joined together, let not man put asunder. That's what Jesus said. And if you look at it, you will see in the Bible that those are the red letters that are in red. And the letters that are in red is what Jesus said. So if God said, if Jesus said, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. That's what he means. Let not man put asunder. Let not man put asunder with his convictions. Let not man put asunder with his theologies. Let not man put asunder with his personal beliefs that are not your own. Let not man put asunder. Even if it comes down to my personal fears, let not man put asunder. Because the reason people break up is because of fear. Fear of this, fear of that. And so to compensate and overcome those fears, they feel like, hey, I'm going to just get out. I'm going to get out before I get hurt. And I get it. It's understandable. But at the end of the day, and even some guys are feeling like, yo, the grass is greener on the other side. Trust and believe you're going to have to face what you don't want to face on the other side of the fence. Seriously, what you didn't deal with on one side of the fence, you're going to have to deal with it on the other side of the fence. And a lot of times you might end up having to put in double work on the side that you jumped over to because you knew what you had over there. But then when you get over here, you don't know. You might have to get out the rat, the, 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 the hoe, the rake, the jackhammer, because, yeah, it might have been, you know, a little piece of grass, but that grass was just green carbon. And now you up here, man, it was easy over there. At least, at least, at least, I, at least I knew what I had. I hear so many guys. They done got this dad on young tenderoni that done did every all kinds of tricks in the bedroom but can't clean a house. That's the God knows truth. See it. Old girl can do all kinds of tricks but can't fix you a, a meal. You getting oodles, noodles, and hot dogs. You getting encore meals. I'm like, man, please. You done ate so many Salisbury steaks that now it's like, man, you don't even want you 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 starting to smell like Salisbury steak. That's how many. That's how much you done had. It's coming out your pores. Because now you know you got yourself. Hey, good morning. Hey, you got yourself a girl who ain't know how to cook, but she knew how to sex. 
But we built the, built the whole relationship off of sex. And I'm going to tell you this. You're going to want something after the sex. You might want a meal. You might want a clean home. But, you know, you ignored all that during the dating phase. Because you was coming hard. You was like, oh, oh, God. Oh, uh, ah! Coming hard. And then you just like, just got amnesia. Oh, uh, whatever. We'll order out. And then after a while, that stuff starts adding up. Like, Dad, what is what is my DoorDash bill? Dad going DoorDash bill like a dad going electric bill. $200. <laughs> you got a $200 DoorDash bill. You start adding it up over, over the month. I'm like, oh, my God. DoorDash dude, no, you by first name. Seriously. So this is the reason why we got to begin to have those conversations. This is the reason why I'm saying let not man put asunder. Because man can put asunder just on fears alone. And that's the God knows truth. So, yes, you got to have sustenance. You got to have something that is uh, sustainable. And that's the reason why that God gives, you know, gives us the family tree. Because here's the one thing, man, we got to have roots. And I said this, I said this, you know, at, at my cousin's homecoming. I said that we have to have roots. And the roots... They have to grow deep in order to have sustainability, in order for your family to be sustainable, in order for your marriage to be sustainable. You have to have roots. The roots have to grow deep and the roots have to get nourishment in order for that tree, in order for you to glory in the blade, the ear, the corn, the fruit, however you want to put it. You want to have glory in it. Those roots have to have have depth and they have to have nutrients. They have to be connected to the source. The source is God. And that's the God knows truth. When you ain't connected to anything, you can't grow anything. And that's the God knows truth. So in order for that thing to be strong and and, and to be able to to manage through the seasons of life, because there's going to be windy seasons, there's going to be stormy seasons, there's going to be winter seasons. In order for that thing to have sustainability, it has to have roots. Because you just don't want your tree to just be blown down by the first storm that comes. And I know storms come. But the one thing about your house, you got to make sure that your house is strong to endure. You have to make sure that your marriages can endure because trust and believe. Just like the three little pigs, the wolf is going to huff and pluff, huff and puff, and try to blow your stuff down. If it's made out of straw, it's going down. If it's made out of sticks, it's going down. But the one thing about them three little pigs, when they built that house full of bricks, he couldn't get past it. So you got to make sure that you have the right materials. You got to make sure that you have the right ingredients for your marriage. It just can't be sex alone. It has to be a, a culmination of things. And this is the reason why we have those conversations. And so this is the reason why you date with a purpose. And I'm going to give you this, and then I'm going to be out. There's four M's for life, for ministry, for for wherever you want to put it. The first is the motive. What is the motive behind me getting married? What is the manner in which I marry? What is the method that I marry? And what is the message that I'm sending out when I marry? So we're going to begin to deal with those in these coming weeks. But you have to understand why you enter into the office of being married, because I'm going to tell you, the office is serious. And marriage, like I said, is the closest thing to heaven or hell. But I'm here to tell you is that you can have success and you make sure what God had brought together, let no man put asunder. So guys, I want you to be blessed. I want you to get my book, Let No Man Put Asunder. You can get it on Amazon. It's in Kindle form, or you can buy it off of me. Now, granted, I'm selling this. You can hit me up on social social media. $10, $2 shipping. I will take and send you out a copy. So hit me up. This message will be on the podcast later on today, but we're going to be in this for a minute. So you got to begin to take your office of being a husband, being a spouse serious. Because it's the most serious thing in the earth. The Bible says that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Jesus is testifying and saying 
what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So I'm here to tell you today is that you don't have to have anything break up your home or break up your marriage. And so, you know, it's things that you're going to have to deal with. We'll deal with those later in this series. But the one thing that I want you guys to understand and know is that if God is testifying about you, you can make it. If God is saying that, yeah, I put this here for you, you can make it. So we're going to pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for the marriages. We thank you for everything today, Lord God. And we choose this day to let not man put asunder because you brought us together. And so, Father, I just ask right now that that people will begin to see and be aware that marriage is serious, that marriage is prophetic, that marriage is seasonal because life is seasonal. Life is prophetic. And so, Father, we thank you for everything that you've given us, everything that you're going to do. And I just pray right now, Father, Lord God, that you will open up the people's eyes that they will begin to see. See through the eyes of faith. See through the eyes of possibility. But also know that you called them for such a time as this. And so, Father, I bless the people. In Jesus' name. You guys be blessed. And we definitely going to, we going to go into this thing hard. But today is just the introduction we're talking about. Let no man put asunder in understanding the office of spouse. Understanding that you carry authority and power as a husband. That you carry carry power and authority as a wife. And, and, And one thing that I've said is that you begin to look at the order. When you get the order right, you get the flow right. So I want you guys to be successful. Be successful, but also be intentional. Because that's the one thing that I want you guys to say. However we minister and act in the place of our authority in the home. And with only your own family. So, you know, the way that you minister, the way that you carry out the acts. Is that you do it for your family. You do it for your family. When you minister, you minister to your own family. Ain't nobody else's family. Now granted, you and your wife might be able to bless another family. God has called you to be a husband and to be a wife to your family, to the one family that God gave you, the family that you guys created. Seriously. When you begin to see that life is seasonal, prophetic, and transitional, you can begin to make moments that will be intentional for change, for structure, and for blessing. I'm going to say that again. When you begin to see that life is seasonal, prophetic and transitional, you can begin to make moments that will be intentional for change, for structure, and for blessing. This is the reason why God has called you, to be intentional, to be to, to flow in that prophetic, because when you begin to see that, that God has called you for this, then you won't treat it any old kind of way. You'll take, you'll take and invest what needs to be invested, seriously. Never take anniversaries or getting away as a waste of time. It's a time for you to recharge. It's a time for you to, to really hear from God and to really rediscover yourselves. Because I'm going to tell you, man, there's so many things that you can do when, when you and your spouse go on vacation because you don't have the stress of the kids. You don't have the stress of bills. You don't have those stressors. And so you can begin to go back to what got you guys together. Seriously. And while you're there, man, please dance, get some wine, you know, enjoy each other. Seriously, that's the God knows truth. Enjoy each other. I'm serious. Especially if you're in a nice place. God bless you. You can take a cruise to Bermuda, man. I know when I was in Bermuda, man, I loved it. What's the God I could live in? serious but at the end of the day man it is what it is and God has called us for such a time but the one thing I want to leave you with man is that you can make it that it doesn't have to be the way that it is you can change you can be healed you can be delivered you can have restoration God can redeem the time it doesn't matter but you have to be willing to put in the work I will show you my faith by my works so with that being said, guys, hey, pick up the book, let no man put asunder. 
Subscribe to the Brother Leon Show, Truth and Life Urban Ministry. I am where, wherever you get your podcast from. iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you can get your podcast. Like, share, and subscribe. We are trying to build up our numbers. And I just got out of YouTube jail, so <laughs> this message will definitely be on the YouTube page. I was in YouTube jail because I put up that, um, what I preached last week, American God's American Conspiracy, and I, I did a podcast before I did the message, so it ended up landing me in, in YouTube jail, but I'm out of jail now, so now this message will be up, and I'm thankful that I'm out of jail, so did my time, but hey, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys, you be blessed, and on that, we are going to be out. When you have truth and life, you have freedom. Follow Truth and Life Urban Ministry on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Like, share, and subscribe to Truth and Life Urban Ministry.